greetings. Nationality is the order of the day, so that's what we're going to be going through today. Speaking about Governor Coolidge, which was ended up being, you know, President Calvin Coolidge, who went to the Pan American Conference when Noble Jurali was there. So he knew about nationality and the importance, the paramount importance of nationality. But then once he became president, the summary he had after the Pan American Conference was speaking of Negroes and blacks. So he switched up. But we'll read this. It says urges law and order. In urging maintenance of law and order, Governor Coolidge defined the need of America as a broader, firmer, deeper faith in people, a faith that men desire. The first flaming torch of Americanism, said Senator Harding, was lighted in framing the federal constitution in 1787. The pilgrims signed their simple and majestic covenant a full century and a half before and set aflame their beacon of liberty on the coast of Massachusetts. Other pioneers of new world freedom were rearing their new standards of li liberty from Jamestown and Plymouth for five generations before Lexington and Concord heralded a new era. It was all American in the destined result, yet all of it lacked the soul of nationality. In simple truth, there was no thought of nationality in the revolution for American independence. The colonists were resisting a wrong, and freedom was their solace. Once it was achieved, nationality was the only agency suited to its preservation. Beginning of Nationality Americanism really began when robed in nationality. The American Republic began the blazed trail of representative popular government. Representative democracy was proclaimed the safe agency of highest human freedom. America headed the forward procession of civil, human, and religious liberty, which, which untimely will affect the liberation of all mankind. The federal constitution is the very base of all Americanism, the Ark of the Covenant of American Liberty, the very temple of equal rights. The constitution does abide and ever will so long as the republic survives. Let us hesitate before we surrender the nationality, which is the very soul of highest Americanism. This republic has never failed humanity nor endangered civilization. We have been tardy sometimes like when we were proclaiming democracy and neutralists while we ignored our national rights. But the ultimate and helpful part we played in the great war will be the pride of America so long as the world recites the story. We do not mean to hold aloof. We choose no isolation. We shun no duty. I like to rejoice in an American conscience and in a big conception of our obligation to liberty, justice, and civilization. A. The more I like to think of Columbia's helping hand to new republics, which are seeking the blessings portrayed in our example. But I have a confidence in our America that requires no counsel of foreign powers to point the way of American duty. We wish to counsel, cooperate, and contribute but we arrogate to ourselves the keeping of the American continent in every concept of our moral obligation. It is fine to idealize, but it is very practical to make sure our own house is in order. The first duty of a government is to be true to itself, said Gov Governor Coolidge. This does not mean perfection. It means a plan to strive for perfection. It means loyal, loyalty to ideals. The ideals of America were set out in the Declaration of Independence and adopted in the Constitution. They did not represent perfection attained, but perfection planned. The fundamental principles was freedom. The fathers knew this was not yet apprehended. The for, they formed a government firm in the faith that it was ever to press forward this high mark. In selfishness and greed and lust for gain, it turned aside, enslaving others. It became itself enslaved. Bondage in one part consumed freedom in all parts. The government of the fathers, ceasing to be true to itself, were perishing. 
But that's what exactly Calvin Coolidge did when he became president. Because after the Pan American Conference, you look at the summary and he's still speaking of black and Negro. And he did not identify them with the nationality, knowing Noble Drew Ali was there. So he did the same thing that he just spoke of that he said the founding fathers did was set aside, you know, loyalty and faith and all that. So, yeah, this was nationality is the order of the day. I know some of the things in this was a little bit off, but you read between the lines and it, it got through clear. Nationality is the order of the day, Islam.